Hi, in this video we're going to take a quick look at the um, log for net appender that um, will send messages to Azure Service Bus event hubs. So in the in the Visual Studio solution here we've got this um, appfx.logfornet.event hubs library and inside here we've got two appenders so if you notice these down at the bottom the first one is um, the SB events appender the second one's the SB events buffered appender and the idea is um, just that we can we can provide some buffering of those events um, in the second appender, which will probably um, help you in maybe higher performance scenarios. So what we're going to take a look at next is um, a little bit of a console application here to demonstrate the use of the appender. So very typical log for net usage here. We've got a um, declaration of a static iLog instance and then in the main uh, method we're going to configure the log for nets um, subsystem and then I'm going to sort of do a loop and I'm going to ping out a whole bunch of messages and um, within the loop I'm just going to call log.debug and that'll basically send a message to um, to log for nets and 10,000 messages and then we're just going to um, do a read line at the end so you can see you know see what's happening behind the scenes now in the config file a couple of things to note so firstly I've got a connection string for an event hub instance so we can see we've got our log for net demo up here and um, you know typical connection string for event hubs next I've got my two appenders down here so I've got this one's configured as the buffered appender so we've got the um, connection string key which I'll look it up from up the top in the config file we've got the path to the event hub the partition key which can be an empty string if you want to use the round robin option or you can specify a, a custom um, custom key we've got the application name which lets me specify what my apps called and that will go as a property on the event I can then um, synchronously or sync asynchronously publish the events I can choose to log as JSON or not. Um, and the idea here is if I log as JSON, then the appender will take the details from log for net and just create a JSON string that'll go as the um, the message on the event hub. Whereas if I don't, it'll just simply be the basic string that was the um, the rendered message from log for net. You can choose to enable it or not. Um, you can so in the buffered one, the idea is that in the buffered appender will um, will write to an internal queue of events that are going to go up to event hubs so that'll use a .NET concurrent queue and um, the appender will just keep adding to that queue and then with the, the publishing threads we can configure a number of threads that'll pull, pull off that queue and push up to the event hub so it'll kind of do the event hub publishing out of, out of process on a, a separate thread and we can also configure the batch size so in this case I can say send 100 events at a time the rest of the configs are um, very log for net specific stuff and the events appender which is non buffered is, is very similar it's just got a couple of properties missing so the idea is it doesn't it doesn't use this um, this um, co uh, concurrent queue internally it just it just pushes it straight out to event hub so what I'm going to have a quick look at now is um, in the code here so we've got the append method where I'm going to grab the config and then I'm going to create my custom logging event and then internally I'm going to um, get my event hub client and then depending on the synchronous property I'm going to do a send async and wait or a send async and, and just fire and forget that and it'll automatically retry a few times if there's any problems so that's um, that's fairly straightforward for the, the basic one and then the buffered appender kind of does a very similar thing except that I've, I've just got this um, helper class the event event hub publisher where I'll um, pass the config through and I'll just enqueue my event in, internally in that and the idea is that um, internally when I enqueue the event if it's not already running it'll kick off a number of threads to, to um, pull that that background concurrent queue and um, internally that's going to create a new um, a new messaging factory and event hub client for each thread grab a batch of up to 100 messages at a time and then it'll either
do send batch or send batch async depending on um, depending on what um, what approach you want to use. Okay, so I guess the next thing to do is um, we'll have a look at this in action. So I'm just going to set my startup projects now, and that's fine. So I've got the my app set to start and the event hub reader, and the event hub reader is just the straightforward sample. Um, from the MSDN website about using the event host as a post to to um, listen to an event hub and, and you know process your messages from it. Okay, so if we spin this up now, so there may be some uh, some old messages on the on the hub from uh, last time I was using it, so they might start reading through. But the key thing is the the sender. So if we press a button. And we'll see how quickly we can um, we can fly through these these messages. So we've done ten thousand log events there pretty quickly. Um, looks like the event hub was already clear, so they're just flying through now on the um, on the receiver side. And um, hopefully that um, that gives you a really you know good view of the advantage of the super high performance offered by event hubs, but used in a log for net scenario. So if we stop this now, and you can see, actually just before we stop, you can see the, the JSON strings coming through there. So you can quite easily pull that um, string off and do something useful with it. And um, maybe maybe you save it to table storage, or you might do something like, um, you know, save it to um, put, push it into a stream analytics um, job or something like that. So... Before we jump into the next bit, now let's um, take a look at the the performance test. So that that was just running. If we double check that, that was running the um, the non-buffered appender. So in the load test, just to demonstrate an example um, of each one. Again, I've got the I've got the two appenders configured, and um, you know we've we've got the the log for net stuff all set up down there now. I've got two um, two load tests here demonstrating the use of each approach. So what we can do is um, have a look at um, running that running that with some loads. So let's, for example, run the selected test here and just have a bit of a look at um, how how this performs quite well. Just while that's running, I'll quickly show you the test. So the, the idea here with the test was to see if we can um, simulate something something a bit more real than just um, looping through and, and logging a load of events. So what I'm doing here in the normal test is I'm just writing out to the um, a debug event. So I'm writing three events and then I'm doing a sleep for 100, seconds, which simu 100 milliseconds, which might simulate some real type activity where it wouldn't just constantly be logging all the time. It's doing something a bit more real. Um, I've got my in static instances of my iLog from Logfinet here and you can see when when this is running now um, so I think I've got I've got this running at um, so let's check the uh, the load pattern here so we've got it running at 10 users currently and um, and you can see we've got so sort of like 94 tests a second, which is which is pretty reasonable, you know, and uh, that's just running on my local dev box playing around a bit and um, The tests, you know, they're, they're just simply taking that point one seconds that we've we've got it configured for and um, What I've what I've tried obviously the, there's only a certain amount of load I can run through this on my dev box, but I was running the um, one of them with 30 concurrent users before and I was getting um just under 300 tests a second so it was pretty you know as, as log for net stuff goes it's pretty reasonable and um, especially when you think of the type of pattern it, it's doing being able to push out to event hubs that that's pretty good throughput for that so um, hopefully that gives you a, a good overview of this code base and um, people can then play around with the code you can perhaps use the appender in one of your applications if that's if that's something you're interested in um, 
I'd, I'd like to get a bit of feedback about what people think of this and if it's you know if it's pretty straightforward if there's any other features that they want if these settings are you know they're not too complicated or anything um, and you know I think that this is something we're already using in, in some of our um, applications we're developing at the minute so we wanted to share this and uh, you know get feedback from the community to see if we can make it even better and I guess one of the one of the other things I'm really interested in is to see what people would do with the events once they get onto Event Hub. So I think our plans are to put them into table storage and then look at doing some Power BI and Power Pivot type reporting on the events coming out of our application. But it would be good to see what other people have ideas about as well. And uh, hopefully this video is pretty useful and feel free to grab the, the download of the appender.